Hi guys, major raw vlog time for today. I'm gonna try to upload this on all my social media platform, uh, Facebook, YouTube, and maybe even on TikTok. So, gusto ko lang talaga makatulong sa inyo kasi it's 7-7 sale. I know marami sa inyo ang naghahanap ng advice kung ano nga ba yung nababagay na device para sa inyo. Ngayong may sale na naman and baka may budget na kayo. Since it's kind of like a good day for me, considering na meron nga akong back injury and today, nakaya na kong umupo for a few minutes. Medyo masakit pa rin talaga. But I am waiting for my surgery in just a few days after I post this or maybe kahit na pag-post ko nito, baka nando na sa surgery room. Hopefully, you guys, pray for me and thank you so much sa mga nag-send ng mga uh, well wishes nila and prayers for my quick recovery. Maraming salamat po. Let's talk about the phones that you should be thinking or considering ngayong may sale or kung kailan man kayo magkaroon ng budget this 2024. So, sisimulan natin sa entry level. So, budget range. Of course, sa 5,000 pesos, nandun yung mga pinag-usapan natin before, yung comparison videos natin, yung ITEL P55. Pwede nyo pong i-consider yun, yung 4G. But I would tell you na much better choice po talaga yung 5G version nun. Mas okay yung camera nun, mas okay yung performance of course, and may 5G na kayo. But, Again, you have to temper your expectations lang talaga sa mga ganong klaseng devices, no? It's not the most powerful chipset out there. Huwag lang po kayo talagang mag-expect ng too much. Sa mga budget range, that applies to every kind of phone na pipiliin nyo. Of course, kahit na G99 yan or G95, solid sa gaming kasi well-optimized na yung mga chipsets na yan. But, again temper your expectations kahit ano pa man yan. And by the way, ito try ko pong i-link lahat po sa description box hanggat mahanap ko po yung link ng mga legit na kung saan yung pwedeng bilhin yung mga sasabihin kong phones dito. Second, of course, pag-usapan natin yung mga nasa 10,000 pesos na price range. Pinaka gusto ko right now is yung Infinix 034G. Yes, this is a phone from last year. And it's not really brand new again if we're comparing it sa bagong release nila na Note 40 series. I would rather get that kesa sa isang phone na merong 7020. Kasi G99, yes, luma na na chipset but again, it's well optimized and pwede pa kayong mag games kesa naman sa 7020 na dehado kayo pagdating sa GPU ng device na yun. So, kung naghanap kayo ng good quality somehow at under 10,000 pesos pagdating sa camera, then Infinix 030 4G ang pwede nyo i-consider. Pwede ba naman i-consider yung 7020 but not the Infinix 1? I would rather recommend yung Tecno Camon 30 na non-pro 5G. So, yes, naka 70-20 yun, pero kung camera lang talaga yung habol nyo, pwedeng pwede po yun. Mahikita nyo po yung quality, panoorin nyo po yung review ng mga other tech reviewers. Kasi ako mismo, wala akong full review nun, but I was able to test it, and sobrang satisfied ako sa camera quality nun. Very sharp, and maganda yung color reproduction. At yan yung maganda sa techno this year. They really improve pagdating sa color science ng mga phones nila pagdating sa camera. So, approve na approve ako dyan pagdating sa camera color science ni Tecno. Susunod, kung above 10,000 pesos naman yung budget nyo or below 15,000 pesos, basta nandiyan sa gitna, I would say kung mahanap nyo ng sale, malaking sale, yung Poco X6 Pro, that is a great phone at that price range. Now, ang pinag-uusapan lang po muna natin this time around are phones na na-release locally, may local warranty. So, hindi pa po ito yung mga China ROM phones. Of course, I will also give you recommendations ng mga China ROM phones kung open-minded kayo and alam niyo yung mga risk pag China ROM phones ang binili nyo. But for now, again, Poco X6 Pro, kung nasa above 10,000 pesos yung budget mo and gusto mo ng performance phone, Pero under or close to 15,000 pesos, yan po, Poco X6 Pro ang dapat nyo i-consider. And also, kung gusto nyo naman ng medyo balance, syempre isipin ng iba, ay baka pwede na i-consider yung Infinix Note 40 Pro Plus. Guys, 
maling desisyon po yan sa buhay. Dahil kung makakahanap pa kayo ng Infinix 030 5G, yun po ang better option. Naka MediaTek Dimensity 8020 versus sa 7020 ng Infinix Note 40 Pro Plus. Ang laki po ng gap nun pagdating sa performance. Again, I promise you, hindi kayo masasatisfy kahit nang bigyan kayo ng magnetic charging or wireless charging ng Infinix Note 40 Pro Plus. Huwag kayong magpapadala sa hype ng phone na yon. Ako lang naman yan na Opinion ko lang po yun. Pero kung yung ibang reviewers ay natutuwa sa phone na yon, that's their take. Pero ako, binibigyan ko lang kayo ng practical na take ko on a device na 15,000 pesos. Again, mas worth it pa yung Infinix 030 5G. Even though it's from last year. And, eto yung maganda. Meron ako nakikita ng mga Techno Camon na 30 Pro na nakasale. E no, maabot minsan ng 15 to 16,000 pesos. Kung mahanap niyo sa ganong presyo ngayong sale event, that is something that I would also highly recommend dahil balance po yan. Maganda yung performance at lalong maganda yung camera pagdating sa photos. Yun nga lang, tandaan nyo na pagdating naman sa videos, medyo dehado po yung phone na yan ha. So baka lang nagagandahan kayo sa quality ng video niya. Yes, maganda po. Pero yung stabilization kasi... Yan ang major problem ng Techno Camon 30 Pro. And even the 30 Premier, which I haven't reviewed yet, pero abangan nyo kasi pag gumaling na ako, pag nakabalik ako, i-review rin po natin yung phone na yun. Now, moving on, over 15,000 pesos, ang pinakal marerecommend ko sa inyo na close naman to 20,000 pesos pag nakasale is of course, none other than the Poco F6. Now, meron tayong alternative, of course, Kung ayaw nyo na sa Poco na brand dahil of course may mga rumors or may mga naririnig kayo, hindi pala siya rumor. Totoo po yun. May mga dead boot issue po talaga yung mga older devices nila. But so far, it's so good. Wala namang dead boot issue. May boot loop from the recent updates nila from just a few months ago. Pero wala pong dead boot. So boot loop, iba po yun. But that's another topic for another video. For now, again, Poco F6 kung nasa... 20,000 and below yung budget nyo pero gusto nyo ng great performance Snapdragon 8S Gen 3 may full review po ako dun sa YouTube channel ko panoorin nyo na lang po as an alternative kung gusto nyo talaga ng gaming device at this price range na nasa below 20,000 pesos above 15,000 pesos nandyan po yung Infinix GT20 Pro napakagandang value po ng device ito again para sa mga ayo sa brand na Poco This is a great alternative kasi naka MediaTek Dimensity 8200 and yes, iisipin ng mga Poco fans ay mas malakas pa rin yung X6 Pro namin naka 8300 and medyo malaki yung gap ng performance. Again, kung hindi naman kayo fan ng Poco and gusto nyo talaga matry yung ibang devices, this is a great alternative. Yung camera na to, it's not good. Yung Infinix GT20 Pro, wag na lang po kayong umasa. Pero ang magandang feature nito is that may bypass charging siya. So kung hardcore gamer kayo, pwedeng-pwede nyo pong pagtsagaan yung lower charging speed niya compared sa other devices. Hindi po siya super fast unlike sa Poco F6 na may 90 watts. But that's okay. Again, dahil nga may bypass charging kayo, pwede kayong naka-plug in and wala kayong problema pagdating sa gaming na tuloy-tuloy. But kung gusto nyo na mas malakas, andyan yung Poco F6. Even the Poco F5 is still a great choice kung may mahanap pa kayo in the market right now. Pwede, pwede pa rin po. And ang maganda sa mga devices na to, so far, na-recommend natin dahil nga local sila, available sa mga stores, online, or kahit saan sa mga malls. That means, meron po tayong local warranty. So kung magka-damage kayo sa mga phones na yan na bagong bilhin nyo, eh, pwede, pwede nyo pong ipa-repair for free. As long as, hindi nyo po kasalanan yung damage. Anyway, kung higher end pa ang hanap nyo, of course, nandiyan yung Poco F6 Pro. And the new kid on the block is the Realme GT6. But the thing is, the GT6 is a little bit expensive. And if kukumpara natin yan sa Poco F6 Pro, the Poco F6 Pro is much better. Mas higher quality yung build niya. 
meron tayong metal build and glass finish sa back panel versus the plastic body ng GT6. Now, binibida naman ni Realme is that better yung camera nila and I haven't tried it myself so I can't tell you kung gaano kaganda or gaano kalaki yung gap pagdating ng camera performance ng Realme GT6 versus the Poco F6 Pro. Watch other YouTubers, I guess, and find out for yourself. Hopefully, may mga comparison online. So, kailangan nyo muna talagang gawin yung research nyo but for me, I would much rather recommend sa inyo kung performance lang talagang habol nyo. Of course, the Poco F6 Pro na naka Snapdragon 8 Gen 2. Uh, the Snapdragon 8 Gen 2 still has a slight advantage pagdating sa GPU performance. So, better optimization, better performance pagdating sa graphics na intensive games compared sa 8S Gen 3. And... Para sa akin lang ha, mas stable yung experience ko pagdating sa gaming with the Snapdragon 8 Gen 2 versus the 8S Gen 3 so far. So yun lang naman yung kalangan yung pag-isipan or balansehin kung performance ang habol nyo sa isang device. Kung camera-centric device naman ang habol nyo, of course, ang may isip talaga natin agad are either Realme 12 series or the Vivo V30 series. And ang maganda sa Vivo V30 series, medyo bumaba na yung pricing niya. So, makakakuha na kayo ng under 30,000 pesos na V30 Pro. And also, I think merong mga under 20,000 pesos na V30. So, napahaganda po nun if ever mahanap nyo at that low of a price. That is something that I would recommend sa inyo kung camera-centric device ang habol nyo talaga in a phone. Another recommendation that I would give pala para sa mga budget gamers, no? Is the Nubia Neo 2 5G na under 10,000 pesos. So, kung hanap nyo talaga is gaming, marirecommend ko po yun dahil meron siyang shoulder triggers, which is really good for FPS gamers. So, mapapakinabangan nyo po talaga yan ng gusto. So, again, that's another thing that you can consider kung medyo limited yung budget nyo. Now, Nasa 25,000 and up na tayo, no? So, Poco F6, F6 Pro. Pag higher end na talaga, 30,000 and above, medyo pipili na tayo sa mga flagship killers. And again, nandyan yung Realme GT6. But it's a little bit expensive. Para sa akin lang, ha? Again, this is just my opinion. It's a little bit too expensive compared to the competition. Uh, for example, kung naghanap ka ng purely gaming device, then you might be able to find something like a Red Magic 9 Pro or maybe the older version, the Red Magic 8S Pro na mas naka-sale siya and mas talagang ano siya, uh, fit for heavy gaming. Then may bypass charging and may fan pa siya. Diba? Mas mapapakinabangan nyo yun. Kung balance naman na experience ang gusto nyo, nandiyan pa rin yung Nothing Phone 2. And hopefully, mag-sale na kasi naka-Snapdragon 8 Plus Gen 1. Na I'm not saying na mahina po yung Snapdragon 8 Plus Gen 1, but if we compare it to the competition, of course, medyo mas mahina talaga siya compared to the Snapdragon 8 Gen 2 and 8 Gen 3 na available na sa mga competing brands, lalo na sa mga China ROM phones. But again, mamaya na po natin pag-usapan yung China ROM phones. Let's not forget, nandiyan pa rin naman yung Xiaomi 13T Pro. So, pwede nyo pa rin yung i-consider. But, of course, para sa mga kaya pa maghintay, wag muna kasi baka lumabas na yung 14T series naman. Sa mga Burr months, I mean, Burr months is just a few months away. Two? Two months na lang, di ba? So, konti na lang, guys. Konting hintay na lang. And then for camera-centric users na gusto lang talaga maganda yung camera, you can consider. Consider lang, ha? Kasi this one you have to import the Google Pixel series. So, Pixel 7, Pixel 8. Napaganda pa rin po talaga ng cameras ng mga phones na yan. It's something that I would highly recommend kung hindi kayo nag-aalala sa local warranty. Ano yan, buy at your own risk. Kasi nga, wala po tayong local warranty. But, hindi po ibig sabihin na wala tayong local warranty. Hindi nyo po mapapaayos yan. Ha? It just means na you will have to spend money and wala rin pong kasiguraduhan na merong available parts right away. But, pwedeng-pwede nyo po yung ipa-repair dito and that is from personal experience na nasiraan ng Google Pixel 6 
So, napaayos ko po yan locally. I just had to wait for a few weeks dahil nga wala yung available parts na kailangan for that device. For flagship level phones naman, na lampas 40,000, 50,000 plus, of course, the best option right now, guys, is actually the Samsung Galaxy S23 Ultra. Mahanap niyan yan. Meron mga 40 to 50,000 pesos. Sobrang sulit pa rin yan until now. Lalo na at meron pa rin yang 10 times optical zoom. Something that you won't be able to find from this year's phones. So 10 times optical zoom, it's a rare thing right now in 2024. Actually, it's extinct in 2024. So kung ako sa inyo, hanap niyo yung flagship, that is something that I would recommend. Again, ililink ko po yan dyan sa description box, sa caption, kung mahanap natin yung mura na S23 Ultra. Para naman sa mga S24 Ultra na nagpaplano, nagbabalak, okay pa rin naman. But alam nyo, to be honest guys, I've been using the S24 Ultra and feeling ko talaga I would be much happier with the 10 times zoom ng S23 Ultra. I mean, panalo yung display ng S24 Ultra, overall performance and overall build, quality and design. Pero, wala eh. I really love my cameras and I really love the 10 times optical zoom. Lalo na for concerts, magagamit yun talaga ng husto yung 10 times optical zoom. So, yun lang yun na miss ko talaga sa S23 Ultra. As an S24 Ultra user, Pero, yeah, kung ultimate flagship phone ang hanap nyo sa Android, it's still one of the best. I can highly recommend pa rin this 2024. And also, of course, easy recommendation yung mga iPhone, iPhone 15 Pro, 15 Pro Max, if you have the budget. Yun lang naman, kung may budget kayo, those phones are still really good. Actually, yung main driver ko is still an iPhone. So, yeah, hopefully, uh, Nakatulong itong recommendation ko pag sa mga phones na yan na locally available. Now, just a quick lightning round lang naman. Mga favorite phones ko from China ROM phones. But this one guys, ha, I'm giving you the caveat, a warning na wala po itong local warranty. But I will still link them in the description box kung sakaling gusto nyo lang talagang bilhin. So pinaka favorite ko is the iCo 12. Panalo panalo po yung build and design, yung quality ng camera niya. It's just the perfect balance para sa akin. Okay yung performance, maganda yung display. Yun nga lang, merong mga rumors na may mga tinamaan ng green line doon. So, just do your research. Tingnan nyo kung gaano kalaganap yung green line na issue. Kasi mahirap na natamaan, lalo na walang local warranty. Um, and then, another favorite is the Redmi K70 Pro na Lamborghini Edition. Napaangas, napahaganda, and maganda talaga yung performance, yung build and design, yung quality overall. It's something that I really love. Redmi Turbo 3 is a really good device. Of course, it's the Poco F6 locally, but it's much cheaper kasi nga China ROM. And then another device that I really like from China ROM, of course, are the Ico phones na Neo. So we have the Neo 9 na Snapdragon 8 Gen 2 under 20,000 pesos. Sobrang panalo nun. Uh, para siyang ano eh, para siyang yung Lenovo Legion Y70 dati no, na Snapdragon 8 Plus Gen 1 na under 20,000 pesos. So ganun yung feels niya. Kaya highly recommended siya. And maganda yung camera niya. So wala pong talo pagdating sa performance and sa camera. And then another phone is of course yung Ico Neo um, 9 Pro na uh, Dimensity 9300 na chipset. It's another great phone. Um, mas malakas ng konti sa Snapdragon 8 Gen 2 but uh, medyo mas mahal. So, mas recommended ko actually yung Neo 9 na non-pro. Kung sakali, no? kung nagkukumpara lang kayo ng better value, Neo 9 na non-pro. And then, of course, pinaka-favorite natin is the Vivo X100 series. We have the X100, X100 Pro, and the one that I'm really using right now is the X100 Ultra. Guys, panalong panalo po yung X100 Ultra. I can't say anything bad about it. Napaganda ng display, napaganda ng performance, napaganda ng camera. It's one of my favorite phones this year. 
Siyempre, nandiyan rin yung... Ano pa ba? May nakalimutan ba tayo? Oh, yung Vivo X100 Pro na nandun na kay Poltec na binenta ko sa kanya. It's really good. Lalo na kung value, no? Value ng pera nyo, nasa 40,000 pesos. That is something that I would highly recommend, guys. Kung may budget kayo and gusto nyo talaga ng napagandang camera and magandang performance, goods to goods. I might have forgotten a few things, a few phones here and there. So, tingnan nyo na lang po yung mga ililist ako dyan sa description box or sa comment section kung saan nyo man mahanap tong video na to. And hopefully, makatulong talaga to sa mga nag-de-decide, lalo na for the 7-7 sale or other sale ngayong month ng July. So, yun lang po. Hopefully, I can make more videos in the future. Kayaanin kong makaupo ng mas matagal. See you again once I'm fully healed. And by the way, para sa mga nakanotice na this thing right here sa neck ko is an unreleased phone na lalabas ngayong July 8. So, abangan nyo rin po. Hopefully, makapag-upload ako ng unboxing video nun or kahit na reels or shorts lang. So, there. Kita-kita ulit tayo whenever I can upload a video. Thank you so much sa mga sumusuporta dito sa Pinoy at Dark Dad and sa mga magpapadala, nagpadala ng mga dasal nila, prayers nila and well wishes para sa upcoming surgery ko. Bye guys! Yeah, I just wanna be free.